All right, a happy Thursday. Hopefully everyone is doing great. Busy Wednesday, a lot going on. Uh, we've got a bunch of videos up on uh, ESPN.com from Wednesday. The Siakam trade, Suns uh, trade guide video, Milwaukee trade guide video. We also have Phoenix. Uh, oh, wait, I just said Phoenix. We also have the Lakers, uh, Detroit, Washington. Um, trade guides come out next week. Uh, we've got an article on the CBA, myself and Tim Bontemps, as far as how the new rules are going to impact the trade guide or trade deadline. And we are going to do a Boston Celtics uh, trade guide video. Um, really kind of nuts and bolts here as far as with the Celtics. Um, 31 and 9 as of Wednesday night after that win uh, against San Antonio. Um, probably best basketball team in the NBA. They are uh, deep as far as when you look at their top six. Uh, top six isn't going anywhere. They are top heavy in salary. Um, fifth highest payroll in the NBA. Um, but has the resources to do some free agent shopping. Um, you're not going to probably go at those high-end stores like some of these other teams are trying to do. But you can probably get something that maybe fits what you're looking for. Um, when you look at how their salary is constructed, and we're going to kind of go through everything, and I'll give you my trade we'd like to see. Um, they've got a $6.2 million trade exception. That is their valuable chip um, in their back pocket. I think Brad Stevens has come out and said it um, You know, when he was doing um, the media up in Boston as far as that is their value uh, chip is that trade exception that was created in the Grant Williams trade signing trade with uh, with Dallas that trade exception Will go away once we get past the, the deadline. You're probably thinking wait a minute aren't trade exceptions for a full year Yes, but once the um, Once the deadline passes and we get into the offseason teams that are over the apron that trade exception lo no longer becomes available uh, to that team same with cash. So for when you look at Boston, and I'm just looking at their trade guide right now, the Celtics have um, $7 million in cash to send out. It's basically use it or lose it. Um, I don't think you want to go splurging at the deadline when you already got a high payroll, but you do have cash available, but that will go away when you get to the night of the draft and you won't be able to go out and, and, um, and buy, a, a, buy a pick and everything like that. So when you look at Celtics, um, Projected to pay a $30 million tax penalty. If you use the full amount, it would cost you an additional $23 million. Um, ownership's paid 110 the last um, few years, two years, as far as in taxes. So they're willing to commit. Um, when you look at it, six players, all earning between 10 and 37. That includes your starting five and then Al Horford. Uh, Jalen Brown's got a uh, cannot be traded. He's not going anywhere. Top six isn't going anywhere. Um, but when you look at it as far as how they're structured, that's why you start looking at everything else as far as what the Celtics have. They have seven players earning um, less than, pay, than, than $2 million. It's basically all minimum players. And Jordan Walsh, who signed the second round pick exception. They've got Peyton Pritchard, who signed that. Um, that rookie extension uh, in the uh, in the off season, he's got a poison pill restriction in there. That doesn't mean he's off the table. Um, it just kind of complicates as far as what goes out, what comes in. For example, uh, he signed that extension in the off season. Um, his salary uh, counts as six point eight million dollars for the acquiring team, four million dollars going out. Um, I've said all along. The there hasn't been a player that signed a rookie extension and then had a poison pill restriction in his contract traded since 2008. Uh, Devin Harris went to um, Dallas. I went from Dallas to, to New Jersey in the Jason Kidd trade, and really poison pill restriction contracts are tradable if you're in that sweet spot of contracts. You know, like uh, that the 10 million, 12 million per year, not the 30 million dollars. And I think we're going to see more of those type players traded in the near future because the rules have expanded as far as how much you can acquire within a trade here. So when you're looking at it, basically Boston has Pritchard 
and then all your minimum guys as far as to go out and do a deal. And the Pritchard extension is a, is a really good contract. And based on where their finances are next year, why would you want to move off his number anyway? Because you're going to need players like that, those in-between players. Because um, things are certainly going to get expensive when you look at the Jalen Brown um, Supermax that will start. Then you've got Tatum, who's going to sign, and then the following year. And then eventually you've got to figure out what to do with Derek White. It eventually starts to add up here. Um, just making sure there's no trades. My phone, my watch is buzzing. Um, they can only take back 110% of salary in a deal. That makes it a little more. So if you start stacking up all your minimum guys, it, you know, when, when I heard like the Kelly Olynyk talks as far as like, well, what are you going to trade like seven guys? I mean, that, that doesn't make sense here. Um, they have been aggressive. Brad Stevens has been aggressive at the trade deadline. 15 trades, six during the regular season. Um, Porzingis, Holiday, Horford, Derek White. Um, they've all traded for certainly Derek White a few years ago at the deadline. Um, last like minor trade last year was kind of a um, you know more of a tax savings. Um, well, at the time it looked like a tax savings, but they traded for Mike Muscala. Um, that increased the payment by four million dollars. They had made a trade before that. Uh, I think Joel Anthony went to San Antonio. All right, here's the trade I would like to see. Ready, Celtic fans? I don't think Pelican fans will like this. I want to trade a 2024 second via Dallas and a 2027 second via Atlanta to New Orleans for Najee Marshall. I don't think Memphis, uh, New Orleans would do that. Um, but for me, if you're in Boston, you're looking for that big wing. Guy can make shots, guy can defend. Another one that's not on here. John Concher in Memphis. Um, would you were you would you be willing to give up uh, your protected a protected one for him because he's on under he's another one of these guys that's under contract for uh, his extension starts next year and you would have him and Pritchard as kind of those in between guys so those are the type of deals if you're in the Celtics front office that you're thinking about as far as can we get a wing wings are hard what fits in with that six point two million dollar exception you've got cash to send out in the deal. Um, I've already said where they are with the luxury tax. Pritchard's um, poison pill. Al's got a trade bonus. I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, Celtics are not allowed to sign a player that was waived during the regular season that had a salary more than 12.4. So if Gordon Hayward gets waived, you are not allowed to sign Hayward. Players like in that, you know, north of $12.4 million. From a draft equity standpoint, you've got a bunch of seconds. You've got eight seconds to kind of go out and play with in the deal. Um, the, um, they're allowed to trade a maximum of two firsts in the next five years, um, 24, 25, 26, 27. You can do 24 and, and 20, um, 24 and 26, 25 and 27. Um, the Spurs have the right to swap in 28. You owe Portland a, um, first in 29. Um, so you do have assets there to go out and make a deal if you had to. I don't, you know, you're 24 first. I think that's kind of a little bit valuable based on where your finances are. Maybe you get a back end guy on your on your on your um, on your rotation there. Um, but that's it in a nutshell with Boston here. You know, these the teams that are these high spending teams that have really limited amount of contracts to send out. Boston's a little bit different though because they still have a bunch of draft picks that they can use in a deal. Um, presents a little bit more challenging here. But you can read about the Celtics in the trade guide. Um, you can go through as far as what they want, but if you're going to keep an, an eye on one thing, it's going to be that $6.2 million trade exception that the Celtics have available.